Wawase, Wawate, Wayabe, Kwis. I am white Northern Lights woman. I am the one who will see those Northern Lights. And my understanding of that is that those ancestors um, will communicate with us. It's one of the ways that they still communicate um, in coming and dancing with us. They come down and they dance. Um, and often if you have that opportunity to see them, if you call out to them, if you call out grandmother and grandfather in, in whatever that language is, they'll come and dance lower. And I've, I've seen this and I know this to be true. Uh, my name um, is Dignified. Um, I am very grateful for my name and I carry it uh, with a lot of responsibility. My name uh, directs, it directs how I live my life and, and what it really, what the responsibility of that name is, uh, is to know what has happened uh, over the last seven generations. And that uh, includes for, you know, that includes Indigenous people, um, First Nation, Métis and Inuit people uh, here on this land, but it also um, has a more global presence and a more global understanding. It's also my responsibility to understand um, what's happened seven generations behind me to my non-Indigenous uh, relationships or relatives and to understand how we've arrived at this moment. I am Mi'kma'ge on my mother's side. Um, I come from Restigouge County, so northern New Brunswick, and I have relatives um, at Ubiganjig, Pokikwaman, uh, and Miguasha. On my father's side, I am Métis, Selkirk Establishment, uh, Red River, Manitoba. And uh, as far as I know at, at this stage of my life, um, I am uh, Sotu and Scottish, so Ojibwe, Cree and Scottish. Uh, it's very important to me in this, this piece sharing, um, sharing with you uh, that I identify um, why that is so important for me to locate myself. And the reason it's important for me is that I can look seven generations behind me in both of my maternal and paternal line uh, and see a very deliberate, very systemic um, targeted campaign to um, separate me from who I am. And getting to those words that I've just spoken to you has been over a 40 year process of walking home. And in your new practices, and I want to congratulate you on those, those, uh, those degrees that are coming down the line, um, but in your practices, you will meet people like me. Uh, you will uh, be in a position to assist. And I would like to try to give you some tools uh, to do that. So that piece around identity and that piece around understanding what's happened before us uh, really assists us in harm reduction. And, and I think that that's a real focus when we're looking at working with um, Indigenous people or Indigenous people who identify one of the things that I will ask you to do in, in your personal and in your professional work is to um, challenge yourself to find your biases um, with Indigenous people. One of the things that I suggest is to take, uh, just take a look at some work that was done through Aboriginal People's Television Network uh, called First Contact. And if you just look at the trailer of that, it's about two minutes and 30 seconds. 
uh, you will find some spaces in there that um, you may hold that bias yourself, or you've heard about it from, you know, your buddy in high school, or your mom or your dad or your grandparents or your aunts or your uncles or something you read in school or the list goes on and on. So take that two minutes and 30 some odd seconds and do a quick exercise, uh, just looking at what those biases are. Um, have you heard them? Where did they come from? Uh, was there any piece in there that you might've sort of been holding in there? Um, and don't be hard on yourself because I'm going to come back to, this has been a deliberate, systemic, targeted campaign um, for generation after generation. So when we're looking at those biases, um, it is like wallpaper within the mind and it's happened generationally. So each time we recognize one and identify it and then go and find that space where that was created and challenge it, we take another uh, layer of wallpaper out of our brains. And that brings us back to the table uh, in, in a really gentle and caring way where we're locating ourselves within the work of assisting an Indigenous person. So it's a suggestion that I always make. It's worth the two minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, it may take you a bit longer than two minutes and 30 seconds to unpack it, uh, but I, I really encourage you to keep doing that work, um, keep looking for those spaces just to take off another piece, just to take off another piece. Um, and you don't need to rip them off, okay? Just gentle, gentle with yourself. And that's how we'll get to really good relationship building. Um, so another piece that uh, I really would like to bring forward to those new practitioners is not to make assumptions um, about Indigenous people and that perhaps, you know, you're meeting an Indigenous person, a client, a participant, um, and you're immediately assuming that they have um, a traditional bundle that they carry, that they smudge, that, you know, this is how they'll recognize themselves. Not all nations smudge. In fact, some nations are really quite against smudging. Um, it shouldn't be done in public in some nations, different medicines. It should be done uh, in a lodge um, or in a longhouse um, or in a sacred space. So just to, again, uh, challenge yourself on some of those assumptions about Indigenous people. Uh, not all Indigenous people practice and, and um, it doesn't make them any less or any more Indigenous. I would really ask you to resist the urge to create a space for a client or a participant where they have now become your educator and that you begin to try to learn about Indigenous people uh, through someone who has come to you to create a safe space um, and move through some things. So I think that that's a, a, one of the largest messages I'm hoping to bring forward um, in this piece is uh, don't be making assumptions. Um, we are not all the same. There are over 600 First Nations remaining in Canada. Many languages have been preserved. Uh, we're not, you know, we're talking about over 600 First Nations, very diverse nations. What, looking, what, what it looks like to be in you out on the rock in Newfoundland and Labrador looks very, very different when we go to Coast Salish territory or we go up to the other coast and we're up into James Bay. So there's much diversity um, among those nations. And, you know, then we have our Métis relatives and then we have our Inuit relatives. We are not all the same. Please don't make those assumptions. Uh, we do not all carry traditional bundles and we do not all practice. Um, and please resist the urge to create a space where your client or participant um, 
Chi Miigwech. Uh, good luck in your practice. And my English name is Elaine Berwalt. <laughs>